I'm an uh, integration MVP from the Netherlands, uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, API apps in Azure. So, um, well, first uh, something about myself. Well, I'm an integration MVP from the Netherlands. Um, I live in Rotterdam. Uh, I work at Motion 10, and Motion 10 um, is a company that is specialized in BizTalk, uh, SharePoint, and BI. Um, in 2013, 14, I became for the first time uh, integration MVP, so this is my second year. Um, I write a lot of blog posts about uh, a biz talk, um, especially about the ESB toolkit, and now I'm focusing uh, also more and more uh, on Azure. So the overview, um, what I'm going to do tonight, um, it's only about 12 slides, so uh, not that many slides. I'm going to do three demos. Um, I'm using um, Visual Studio 2015, um, so I've created a, a virtual machine uh, with Windows 10, so hopefully everything is going to work. Um, the first demo is, is, is a short demo, uh, how to build your API app. Um, the second demo um, is going to be about remote debugging, um, so you can also uh, debug your API uh, in the cloud. Uh, and the third demo is about how to add authentication uh, to an uh, API app. I'm also going to talk very briefly about connectors. Um, so it was only in the last part. Okay. Um, well, let's start. Uh, first, about some yeah some short introduction about um, the API economy. Uh, that's something that Microsoft now talks about. And what you see is that more and more companies uh, create uh, web APIs for their customers uh, and expose functionality uh, with those APIs or web APIs. Uh, and, and what Microsoft says, well, they're, they're even talking about the API economy. And on this slide are three examples uh, of companies that uh, well are well known or reasonably well known uh, and, and have it. web APIs as their core business. Well, the first one is SendGrid. Uh, with SendGrid, you can send emails. Uh, uh, they have created uh, web APIs which you can uh, use to send emails with. Um, so you don't need an, uh, an email server anymore. Well, I have some large customers. So um, think about Spotify, Foursquare, and, and Uber. Um, well, the second one is Twilio. Twilio um, has web APIs that you can use uh, to make phone calls, to receive phone calls, or um, or send an SMS. And with the last one is uh, is Stripe, um, and, and and Stripe has web APIs uh, which companies can use um, to manage uh, their customer payments. Also has uh, large customers, uh, Twitter, uh, Salesforce, and and Pinterest, for example. Well, these are just a few examples. Um, but what you see is that more and more companies uh, create web APIs uh, to expose functionality, and also more and more companies are using these APIs um, to build functionality on. Now, and web APIs are ideal because, um, well, uh, they're easy to call or execute. Um, they're lightweight, so they have a good performance, and you can almost build anything on top of it. Uh, so also uh, web pages uh, and mobile apps. Um, and for example, I work uh, now um, at the European uh, Container Terminal, the ACT in Rotterdam, um, and they process um, containers for, for deep sea vessels. And they receive a lot of, well, old school uh, EDI messages from their customers, and they're using BizTalk um, to process these, mess uh, th these messages, but what they also did is, on top of that, uh, they built a uh, web API that customers can use to, to get the status of a, of a container. Um, and that's very handy because, um, well, now the customers know, uh, know when, when can I pick up the container, uh, is it already uh, available? Um, so also in, in companies that normally use BizTalk, now you're seeing that they're also exposing uh, web APIs for the outside world uh, so that customers uh, can use those uh, web APIs. <coughs> so, 
so the next slide is about what you can do when you want to build a web API um, and the, the challenges uh, that you meet um, because when you're going to build a web API you have a, there are a lot of things that you need to consider uh, for example logging and, and versioning um, and some situations you want to connect to both the on-premise world and also the, uh, the cloud um, you have to think about governance uh, of the web API uh, monitoring um, performance is also very important uh, scaling um, uh, if your web API becomes popular um, well you have to be able to scale so there are a lot of things that you uh, need to, th uh, to, to think about when you're going to uh, create a web API and of course uh, Microsoft uh, has, uh, has uh, created something for that um, and that are uh, the API apps uh, the API apps are uh, part of um, the Azure App Service Suite and the Azure App Service Suite uh, also includes uh, web apps, uh, mobile apps and logic apps. Um, so very short uh, web apps um, you can use to, to build quickly uh, a, scalable, a scalable website. Um, and you can create your own web website, but there are also templates available for WordPress and Umbraco, uh, Django. Um, <clears throat> and with mobile apps, um, you can build your own uh, back-end Azure service um, for, uh, for example, um, an iPhone or Android and, and of course, uh, the Windows Phone. Uh, logic apps, um, you can use to automate um, business processes without uh, coding. Well, there already was a webcast about it. Uh, and yeah, what I'm going to talk about uh, tonight is uh, API apps. Um, and API apps you can, can use or um, uh, with a web API or sorry, an API app. Uh, you can develop your own custom uh, and RESTful uh, API uh, or web API. But you can also use uh, an API from the marketplace uh, to connect to, to services like uh, Office 365, Salesforce, uh, and, and many more. Ah, sorry, I forgot this. In this slide is uh, some animation. Um, the next slide. So, what is advantage of using uh, API apps in, in Azure. Um, well, when you look at the left side of, uh, uh, of the, on the, on the slide, um, you, it's, it's built uh, on top of a web app. Eh? And uh, Microsoft used to call it uh, the Azure uh, website. Well, they rebranded it and now it's, uh, they, they, they call it a web app. Um, but that but it has all the advantages uh, of the web app eh, because it's built on top of it. Uh, and web apps are, are very scalable, they're easy to deploy, um, and you can also access on-premise data, or data, sorry. Um, and when you look at the, the right slide, um, an API app has um, some, some additional benefits. Well, they're still in preview. Um, Microsoft, Microsoft doesn't say when it's going to be available, they say soon, um, yeah, when you watch Channel 9 for example, um, well maybe uh, in the end of the presentation uh, Sarvana or, or Michael uh, knows when, when, they're gonna, um, when it's available, but um, so maybe at the end of the, of the presentation. Um, but um, what you can now can also do um, is um, you get easy access for, for SaaS, for example. Um, there's automatic generation of metadata with, with Swagger. Um, you, you can use it in logic apps. Um, and you, can also have, you also have a toolkit available um, in Visual Studio. Um, you have to install the Azure SDK uh, first, but um, um, yeah, then you've got also some templates. So the first demo. Uh, and it, this is going to be uh, more an introduction of how you can create an API app in uh, Visual Studio. It's a short demo, more to give you an idea what's uh, out of the box. Um, 
So first, I'm going to create an API app uh, in Visual Studio. Um, so we're going to look what is generated with the template. Um, then I'm going to enable the Swagger UI. Um, and we're going to test it. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, we're going to deploy the API app uh, in Azure. So let's go to the virtual machine. And I hope everybody uh, can also see now my screen. Um, so Windows 10, I already started uh, Visual Studio. So this is Visual Studio 2015. Um, well, let's start uh, and create an API app. So I'm going to create a new project. And in the new project, uh, I have an ASP.NET web application uh, template. Um, and let's give it a name. So for example, my first API app. And when I click OK, I can uh, choose the Azure API app. Well, you can see that it's still in preview. Um, so when I click on OK, it's going to generate uh, the API app. Um, so you, you get some additional uh, stuff, like uh, that it says that it, it's created. Um, and what you get out of the box is a controller, and it does. Uh, it seems a lot like uh, MVC. So when you're used to uh, <clears throat> to develop with that, it's it's a lot similar. Um, you already get a controller. Um, you have some methods. So here you see uh, it has a get method uh, to get data. Um, you can also have a post uh, to post. Uh, data. But what you don't have out of the box is that normally you also work with a model. Uh, well, we don't have it here. It doesn't really matter. Um, in the next sample, uh, I'm also using that. Um, what also is uh, important is that you get automatically uh, Swagger and the metadata. So when I click on this page, um, you see um, a lot of comments, and the Swagger UI is uh, by default not enabled, so you have to enable it uh, yourself. Well, I can enable it here, so I have to get this uh, way, save it, and now when I build it, well, hopefully, uh, well, this is very uh, out of the box, so it should work. Uh, well, the build succeeded. And what you now get is a, an error message. And well, this is this is normal. <laughs> this is a little bit strange, but um, and that's why because you have to route uh, to Swagger, for example, to the test page. Um, so when I type, type Swagger in it. Um, you get the Swagger uh, test uh, page, and here you see um, you get the list of the operations that are um, <clears throat> that you get by default. Now, for example, you can also um, <clears throat> execute uh, the API. So when I click here on Try It Out, I get the result value, and this is what you get. Uh, this is the result from the controller. Um, so what you see is now that everything um, works, and, and I'm also now able to uh, to deploy this. Well, this is not very useful, but um, let's see if we also are able to deploy this. Um, so when you right-click on a project, and normally uh, you have to write a lot of more of code. But um, so let's say, for example, this is uh, this is my service. Uh, I want to deploy it. And when you right-click on the project, you are able to uh, to publish the web API or the API app. Um, and here, I can uh, choose to. Uh, I can say here I want an uh, API, 
Uh, you can uh, choose an existing one, but we want to create a new one. Um, so you also have to add, uh, you have to give it a name. You have, um, so when you <coughs> enter these, uh, the data, um, you're able to deploy it. Um, and you also have to uh, select your subscription uh, in MSDN. Well, I think it's going to take a little bit too much time to deploy it. Um, so for the next uh, sample, this is also not really important. Um, so I'm not going to do this. Um, <clears throat> I think also it's going to take a little bit too much time. Um, OK, so this is uh, when you uh, want to create an uh, API app, uh, this is what you get out of the box. Um, it's very easy. Uh, to modify it or to add your own uh, controller and your own model. Uh, for example, you can throw this away and, and add your own uh, controller. When you right click it, uh, you say add and add your own, uh, for example, controller or, or methods. <coughs> okay, um, so this is my first demo, more like an introduction. What do you get out of the box? And I think the second demo is, is more, more interesting. Uh, the second demo is about uh, remote debugging, so how you can debug your uh, API app remotely. Um, <coughs> so in this demo, I'm going to use a, a custom API. I already developed that API, uh, and that API retrieves orders uh, and writes orders uh, to, an, uh, to an Azure SQL database. Um, First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the API locally on my uh, development machine. And what, what a developer always says, yeah, it works on my machine. And also, in this case, uh, it should work on my uh, dev machine. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, publish uh, the API app um, with the debug build configuration. So, uh, and attach a debugger on the API app, and, and then I'm also able to debug remotely uh, the API uh, on the um, <coughs> on Azure and um, and it's almost impossible what, what I've done is I created a bug uh, in Azure so hopefully we're going to see is that it's going to work on my dev machine but it doesn't work uh, on uh, in Azure um, and then we, ha we have to debug it and, uh, and hopefully we can solve the problem and uh, that only in five minutes <coughs> So back to uh, the virtual machine. <coughs> well, let's close this uh, project and go to the order project. First, I'm going to walk through the code, uh, what I've created. Um, then I'm going to build it uh, and run it. So what I've done here is um, I have created an, an order app. Um, I also have some code to, to get the order from Azure. Um, so I've built a class. Um, so let's go through the class that I created. And here in the class, I'm calling a stored procedure. And with the stored procedure, I'm getting data from uh, order data from, uh, from the Azure SQL database. And that order data I'm, I'm putting in a class. Uh, so I've created an order class. And order class is a model. So this is what you don't get out of the box, but um, you also need, uh, normally when you create an API, you also create uh, a model. Uh, and here we have another an order result um, <coughs> model. So. Now let's test it locally on my dev machine. So I'm running the uh, API app locally on my dev machine, but I'm um, <coughs> uh, I'm getting data from Azure. So first I have to build it, um, and we get the error message. Well, let's go to the Swagger test page. And, and we get a list of the operations. And what I'm going to do here, I'm getting the order with the ID 1000. Well, 
and here you get the data from the Azure database. And you're so this works. Um, I also can uh, call the API directly uh, in the UI. So I'm now using the Edge uh, browser, the new browser in Windows 10. And what you get is almost the same result what you normally get with Chrome. Um, so when I call the API, oh, well, this is not, I have to remove the swagger part. So what you now see is I get the JSON in the browser. Uh, normally with the Internet Explorer, uh, the JSON um, is, um, <coughs> You have to download it uh, as a file, but uh, with Google Chrome, you normally also get it uh, in your browser, the result, and also now with the Edge browser in Windows 10, you also get it. Uh, so it, it behaves a little bit the same as, uh, as uh, Google Chrome. So here you see uh, the same with, uh, with Swagger. It's, it has the same results. But now let's test the page in, um, <coughs> in Azure. Well, you already deployed it to Azure, so it's already running in Azure. Um, so I don't have to deploy it anymore, but let's have a look if it, we can test it in Azure. So now what you get in uh, Visual Studio 2015, you also get a Cloud Explorer. Um, in Visual Studio 2013, you have the Server Explorer with some Azure, uh, additional Azure uh, parts in it. And now Microsoft, uh, Microsoft has created also a Cloud Explorer. Um, they're saying uh, it's, it's when you install uh, the SDK 2.7, um, you're able to use Visual Studio 2015, and uh, you also get uh, the Cloud Explorer in Visual Studio. So um, <coughs> it's almost the same as a Server Explorer, but um, <coughs> in the future, you get also some additional uh, features. So let's go to the order app in Azure. Um, I can open it in the browser. And here, surprisingly, I'm having an error. So when I now say API order 1000, uh, it doesn't work. Um, so we have to debug it because, uh, well, we don't know what, what is wrong. I know what is wrong, but... <laughs> uh, the audience is not. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what you now have to do is when you uh, want to deploy it again, um, or publish it, um, it is important that you, in the settings, um, that you say the configuration uh, is debug. So, this is important. Um, so, you have to publish it uh, with the debug configuration. Uh, well, I already did that, so uh, we don't have to do that uh, anymore. Uh, and another thing is that you have to um, add, when you go to the Cloud Explorer, uh, you have to attach a debugger to the uh, API app. So I'm going to do that now. And when well, I don't know. Normally, when you attach a debugger, um, ah, now it's starting. Um, it's applying uh, the debugger to the API, and uh, when it's finished, um, the browser is started. So hopefully, the browser starts in uh, in a few seconds. So here you get the browser, and what you now have to do is add breakpoints. I already added breakpoints, um, so here you see the two breakpoints uh, I've added. So now I'm able to, uh, to to debug. So let's go to the methods. So I want, and here you see that this is the first uh, breakpoint um, uh, in the method. So I've added an, uh, a breakpoint to the get order method, um, and I also um, so when I go to uh, when I hit at five, it goes to the next breakpoint, 
and the breakpoint is in the part that it's trying to get the data from uh, the Azure SQL database. So this is the part where I uh, have created a custom class. Um, so the method calls the custom class tries to uh, tries to get the data from um, <coughs> from the Azure SQL database, and I'm having a try catch. So what you see here is a try catch. And somewhere here, um, the try catch is executed, and we're now in the exception handler. And what you're now seeing is that the login failed for the user Scott. So um, on my development machine, uh, when I test it locally, uh, it works. Um, it is able to to log in. And now when I am uh, when I try to um, execute uh, the same API in the cloud, um, well, it's not able to, to log in for the user Scott. So why is that? <clears throat> well, what I've done is that um, I've put the, um, the user data to log in, and well, this is the wrong page. So here you have the connection string. And here I have the user. Um, here I have the user Scott, and here I have the password. So everybody forget this password because it's, it's highly confidential. Um, <coughs> but this password is wrong on the production environment. And let's go to the uh, or the, the Azure uh, environment. So let's go to the uh, to the portal because in the portal I'm also able to configure. Um, well, your own uh, user uh, data. So, so when I go to the Cloud Explorer, um, I can uh, open uh, uh, <coughs> the API app in the portal. So let's do that, and hopefully, it's gonna start. This is a little bit strange with the portal because sometimes it's very fast and sometimes it's it's a little bit slow and it's it's, it's a little bit uh, difficult to to uh, to see so one why is it is it fast or, or slow? <coughs> but what you're what you're able to do with uh, with your API app is um, when you go to uh, one environment to another, you are able to to change your login ID. Uh, so what I've did um, when I deployed the API app, uh, I also have changed the, the credentials uh, to login. So you're able to do that when you go to the API host. Um, so now I'm going to the host uh, where the API is deployed to. And here I'm able, when I click on the settings, <coughs> um, I'm able to change um, <coughs> the connection. So here, when I click on connections, um, I can configure my own custom uh, connection string. And that is very handy because um, Maybe you're having a development environment, but you're also having uh, a production environment where you'd use another database. So um, it can be handy. So here I have the connection string. Well, well I'm not going to change it. I think um, probably that's going to take too long. Well. Let's 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 try to make it work. Well, but it's not gonna it's not gonna take too long. Um, I'm gonna try to uh, to make it work. So, so here I am in the credentials. Um, and what I already said, uh, you can change it here. Um, so let's let's go back. Uh, let's go back to Visual Studio. 
copy uh, the credentials. Um, um, let's change it here. Well, the only downside here is that these boxes are a little bit small, so you're not really able to see what you're doing. Um, but hopefully, I've entered the right credentials now. I save it. Uh, you don't have to normally. You don't have to restart your uh, API app. Um, now it already should work. So let's see if it does. Um, let's get back to Visual Studio and open the the API app again uh, in the browser. And I have to add API and uh, the orders thousand. So now it's going to route to the same methods, and hopefully it's going to work now. So now we get the same result uh, as on the dev uh, machine. Um, so uh, well, phew, <laughs> it worked. So it's always nice that your your demo worked. <laughs> okay, great. So let's uh, go back to the slides. So this was the second demo, uh, how to uh, remotely debug your API app uh, in Azure. Um, so what you're able to do is you do uh, you can do exactly the same what you normally do on your dev machine. You're also able now to, to do in the cloud. Uh, you can uh, step through the code. You can see um, all the variables um, uh, where you put your, um, your break points, um, you can stop. Um, so it's, it's, it's great functionality. The architecture. Uh, now it's a little bit past nine. It's a, it's a little bit uh, complicated. Uh, when you see this, uh, you think, whoa, it's a little bit complicated uh, slide. I think um, um, it's a good slide because it gives uh, and an, an it gives you an ID um, of the, how the API app works. So um, <clears throat> um, well, let's uh, let's go through it. Um, so first, let the, let's look at, at at the gray square in the middle, um, uh, the resource group, and the resource group is a logical container uh, where your API app can land. Um, so um, hey, your your API app can uh, can land there, but also other apps uh, like API apps from the gallery or mobile apps and, and logic apps, and they can all live together in the same resource group. Um, and in fact, they're all um, web apps uh, except the, the the logic app. Now, what is important um, that if you want to do authentic authentication, uh, you use the, the gateway. And the main feature of the gateway is uh, is an identity broker. Um, and you can use uh, Azure Active Directory or Facebook or Twitter. And it has the same concept as, uh, as mobile services. Um, so when you log in, uh, an ID token uh, uh, is stored uh, in the token store, uh, and that can be in an, an, an Azure uh, or an Active Directory token, or for example, the Facebook token. Um, <clears throat> but uh, what then happens is that uh, a Zumo token uh, is sent from the from the client uh, to the backend. Um, and why it's called the Zumo token? Because uh, it has the same concept uh, as mobile ser services. So, um, and Microsoft thought, well, let's um, because it's the same as as mobile services. How you log in? Um, they also kept the name the same. So the name is from uh, from from mobile services, and uh, and now you'll uh, they they also use it in uh, API apps. <coughs> um, also, um, we have the, the consent servers, uh, and the consent server um, is uh, 
almost it looks the same as, as the gateway, but it, it solves another problem uh, with the consent server. Um, um, well, the gates uh, and the gateway is, is used to, to log in into the app, uh, but the consent server is designed for uh, what, what Microsoft calls uh, ad hoc SSO. Um, so, for example, if you want to to log in into Salesforce um, and you need other credentials uh, than the credentials that you're already using, um, well, you can can store those credentials in the consent service or server. <coughs> So the next demo and the last demo, uh, what I'm going to do today uh, or tonight um, is how to add uh, Azure Active Directory authentication to an uh, API app. Uh, and I'm using both the preview portal uh, to configure the authentication uh, to the API uh, app and uh, I'm using uh, Azure Active Directory. and that I'm going to configure in the in the Azure portal. Um, so the first thing that what I'm going to do is um, <coughs> configure uh, the authentication. Then I'm going to check uh, if the authentication works. Um, if if the if the API app is protected, well, hopefully it's going to display an error message. Um, then I'm going to log in. Um, and check again if it, if it works. So then I should be able to uh, uh, to see the result of the API app. Um, and I'm also going to use the, the, the Postman tool uh, from from Google. Eh? So that the Postman is is a tool that is built upon uh, Google Chrome. And with Postman, I am go also going to call the API app. Uh, and then I'm going to need that Sumo token. So in Postman, I'm going to uh, add a Zumo token to the header, uh, to the, um, and then I'm able to also. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to send a request. <coughs> so back to the virtual machine for the last uh, demo. Well, first let me close this, <coughs> or yeah, close everything. And for this, I've created uh, another example. So now what I'm doing is um, I want to add uh, authentication to the context app. So there's another sample I've created. So first, let me open it in the preview portal. And it can be sometimes a little bit confusing because uh, the API apps are in the preview portal. Uh, and some other functionality. So um, what I'm also going to do is uh, to add uh, the Azure uh, or configure the authentication in um, uh, in Azure Active Directory, and that's uh, in the normal or in the, in the other portal, in the Azure portal. So um, and hopefully uh, they're going to create uh, one portal for it because it can be a little bit confusing. Where is my functionality? Uh, well, API apps are in the the preview portal. So we have to do a couple of things uh, uh, in a portal. First, um, uh, in a context app, so the context app, um, it returns uh, data of context, so it's, it's not really that fancy. It's more important uh, to see what, yeah, uh, how you can configure uh, <coughs> uh, the authentication. So first, what you have to do is on the, the context app, you have to enable your, uh, authentication. So when you go to settings, and here you can say authentication. And normally this works, but. Let's see if another. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, when you click on application settings, um, here you can see 
uh, you have different uh, options what you can use. So normally um, something is public, uh, everybody can use it. Internal means that only other um, API apps are, are able, uh, in your resource group, are able to, uh, to call it. Uh, and public authentication means, um, well, that it's using, uh, that you have to authenticate first. So what you have to do is you have to, um, <coughs> you have to configure, because I want to enable uh, Azure Active Directory in this, uh, in this sample, um, I have to say here that it's public authenticated. So this is um, <coughs> the Azure part, or sorry, the, um, the API app uh, part. Um, and I also have to configure uh, the gateway. So in the gateway, I have to configure which authentication we're going to use. So now I'm going to click on the gateway. Um, it has its own properties or its own settings. So now when I click on the gateway and I click on settings, <clears throat> and here I can click on identity, and here I'm able to choose which type of authentication I want to configure. Um, So here, for example, um, I have to enable uh, um, <coughs> configure uh, these parts. And now it's getting a little bit, um, well, complicated is maybe not, but you have to, you have to um, watch carefully what you're doing now because some parts now are in the other, par in the other uh, uh, portal. So I need some information from uh, the Azure uh, Active Directory uh, <coughs> uh, settings. So let's look at the other uh, portal where I have to configure uh, the Azure Active Directory uh, part. And hopefully. And now. I miss uh, uh, my uh, well. Let's let's go back to um, to my other portal because So I have to also to log in. Um, oh, sorry. I need the I need the other portal. Yeah. So now you're seeing the confusement. Uh, <laughs> um, this is the other portal. It also has another URL. Um, so maybe let's go back to um, to my virtual machine and keep everything in one place. It's, it's more. And because I'm already logged in in the other portal, um, it sees that, so I don't have to log in again. Um, and this portal is also a little bit slow sometimes, um, and it because it has to, you have a lot of features uh, that you can um, enable. Uh, so sometimes it takes a little bit of time.
Okay. Um, Azure Active Directory. It's almost... Uh, so, I already configured uh, Azure Active Directory. Um, so, let's see uh, what properties um, you have to configure. Um, what you have to do in Azure Active Directory, you have to uh, create a user. So, when I click on users, uh, I've created a user uh, where I'm, what I can uh, uh, use to log in with. Uh, and I also created um, an application. You also need an application. Uh, so, these are the applications you can use um, for authentication. <coughs> so, in this case, I have created a contacts uh, app. And and now it's getting uh, so so some of these properties you need um, in uh, the other portal. So for example, the client ID. So this is something that you need uh, in the preview portal. Uh, but if you so when I go to the preview portal, I need the client ID. But the URL what you log in with. Uh, I need in the Azure portal. So th here it, it's getting a little bit complicated because, uh, or uh, you have to be careful what you're doing. You have to watch out what you're doing because here uh, I have to configure uh, the URL um, <coughs> uh, in the Azure Active Directory. So what you're seeing that some properties you need in in this portal and some properties you need in the other portal, and th uh, that's. Um, it can look, can get a little bit messy. Um, so here are the properties of the context app. Um, the ID that is generated uh, out of the box. This is something that you have to get from the uh, portal. <laughs> so you can add uh, the application um, or, or create the application, and then. Oh, I'm sorry. When you go back to um, the preview portal, here, and I added the last part is that here I have to say um, which tenants are uh, allowed, uh, and this is also the domain of uh, the Azure Active Directory. So when I go back, oh, sorry, I do it again. So here, when I go back to the context app, application I created and let me see the domain so this is also what you get out of the box um, so this is just a name I, uh, I created uh, and this name I need uh, and also in the preview portal so this is what you get here so um, I now enabled um, the uh, Azure Active Directory uh, authentication. So hopefully now when I'm going to um, um, when I'm going to uh, try to execute the API to execute the API app uh, I get an error message uh, because it, it needs authentication. Um, so I'm not able to use Swagger for example or, or call the API. So when I click on the <coughs> on the URL, uh, so this is the URL of the API app. It gives you an error message. Um, so first, you have to log in uh, to see the result of the of the API. So when I go back to the uh, context app, uh, I have to log in, and you log in with the gateway. So when I go to the to the gateway, and this is uh, this is something what I have configured uh, in the authentication part of the Azure Active Directory. Uh, when I click on the URL, it says the gateway is up, and when I add login and the type of login I'm going to do, so I'm going to use Azure Active Directory. Or uh, 
is going to reroute me um, through the login part of Azure Active Directory. And now I'm using uh, the email address or the, the user that I've created in Azure Active Directory. So I enter the credentials. Well, now the login is complete, so I'm authenticated. Uh, and when I go back now uh, to my API app, uh, it sees that I'm authenticated. So when I, and here I'm authenticated in this uh, tab. So first it's going to see if I'm really authenticated. Uh, so this is the URL of uh, the API app. But now when I say, for example, um, slash contacts, yeah, because I want to get the contacts, for example, or sorry, you always have to, first what you have to do is say API, and then you add the method. So now, uh, because I'm authenticated, I, I'm getting the result. Uh, <clears throat> so um, I get the JSON uh, result, and now what I have to do, or what I want to do, is that um, I also want to call this web API or API app, sorry, uh, with uh, the Postman tool, and with Postman I have to add uh, also a Zumo token. Um, so I need that Zumo token. And what you now can do in the Edge browser, um, you can also, <clears throat> when you hit F12, you're able, um, so here, uh, when I hit F12, I now also have developer tools. So also this is slightly the same as, uh, it feels the same as uh, what you also can do in Google Chrome. Um, because I want to have that uh, Gumo uh, token, and uh, that's important uh, for for um, <coughs> for the Postman tool. So what I now can do is when I click here, um, because the Zumo token uh, is put away in a cookie, so I'm going to click on the cookies, and here I say the, here I see the Zumo token. So the Zumo token uh, is a cookie when you uh, log in uh, in the browser. And this Zumo token I, I need for the tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, this Zumo token. Um, well, let's put it in Notepad. And it's a very long string, so hopefully I don't make mistakes. And I think this is the end of the token. And this token I need for uh, for Postman. So what I want to do is uh, what you now uh, what you saw is that uh, I called the API in the browser, but now let's try to call the API uh, with uh, Postman. So Postman uh, is an extension on uh, on Google Chrome. Um, you can download it. It's a, it's a very nice tool uh, to call uh, web APIs and to test them. <coughs> and what you, you see is that it's very fast when you try to execute it. <laughs> uh, well, let's delete. Uh, let's delete it. So I think uh, what you already saw here is the uh, is the URL. This is no fun eh? because here I already have. Let's let's clear. Uh, let's clear everything. So first, let's see if you uh, first. Let's uh, have the error message. So I try to execute it. I don't have any headers. Um, so now I'm seeing the same error message. Uh, um, what I saw before in the browser uh, before I uh, logged in. Um, so when I add a, uh, the Zumo token, um, I can also <coughs> uh, you don't you don't need to log in anymore. So let's copy this token. 
and here with the headers uh, added as a variable and hopefully this is the right string. So, so now I added uh, the header. Okay, well let's try to execute it. And now you see that I'm, I'm able, because I've added the, the Zuma token, uh, uh, I'm able to, uh, to see the same result as in the browser. Uh, so again, when I remove the Zuma token, it should fail. Well, and it does fail. <laughs> Okay, well, great. Um, <clears throat> so this is my last demo uh, for tonight. Well, let's go back to the slides. Um, <clears throat> so the last slide, uh, SaaS connectors. <clears throat> And with SaaS connectors, um, well, that's a type of API app that lets you uh, easily connect uh, to, uh, for example, SaaS platforms like uh, Salesforce or Twitter, uh, Facebook, well, Office 365, well, uh, and a lot more. Um, in the beginning, there were about 40 um, when, when, when they started with API apps, um, and now that number is growing because Microsoft um, develops connectors, but but also uh, other companies. Um, what important is is that when you um, these connectors are available in the in the in the marketplace, uh, um, but when you install them, you're not getting the source code, eh? so um, that's not available. But what Microsoft now Soft now also have done recently is that um, they have put some uh, connectors on GitHub. Um, or API apps uh, that you can use in, um, in Logic Apps. Um, so when you want to see how a connector work and, and what extra, because you, you can do a lot of extra things, what I've now showed with the API apps is, is more a standard API app, but if you want to use an API app as a connector in, um, <clears throat> in a Logic App, you can do a lot more. This is more, this is slightly uh, more advanced. Um, maybe that's interesting uh, for another uh, uh, presentation. Um, so this is uh, this is it for uh, tonight. Um, I have one slide left, uh, and that's for the questions. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed your session. Um, well, and uh, let's see if there are any questions. Hey Thomas, so it's Mike.